It is no secret that former Texas congressman and presidential candidate Ron Paul has had some issues with the Federal Reserve. Not surprisingly, Paul has his own choice for the next chair of the Fed. It isn't Janet Yellen. His pick is, well, we'll let him tell you. Former Congressman Ron Paul joins us this morning to talk about the Federal Reserve. Congressman, good to have you back. Good morning. Thank you. Nice to be with you. All right. So all these names out there, Cohn, Ferguson, Geithner, Summers, who would you take? Well, I picked NOTA, none of the above, because I don't think it makes any difference. Uh, they all endorse the principle of uh, manipulating interest rate and believing that they can decide how much money supply there should be and when to raise rates and when to lower it. And uh, you can't expect anything new or different than that. So one individual might manage things slightly differently. But uh, overall, it'll be the same thing. It's uh, still the monetary system that we have to deal with, not the particular manager that's going to be involved. Right. I, obviously, you wrote End the Fed a few years ago. Uh, the answer, I guess, not too terribly surprising <laughs> coming from you. But it, dealing, working in, an, in a political context like we have, Congressman, who do you think is the most likely nominee right now? Well, it looks like it's yelling. I mean, but uh, it's still early. They do a lot of manipulating, uh, pushing back and forth. Last week, it looked like it was summers, and all of a sudden it shifts. But who knows what will happen the next month or two. But right now, I think the consensus is that she'd probably be nominated. Yeah. Your son, uh, Senator Rand Paul, said that his pick would be either Hayek or Friedman, which is going to be a tough get. <laughs> well, n neither one of them liked the Fed <laughs> so very much. Uh, Freeman wanted to turn it over to a computer, uh, which uh, I, that's not exactly my position, but it would probably be better than a few individuals and one in particular behind the scenes in secret pretending they know what interest rates should be. That's, that's to me, the most amazing thing that people accept this. The most important uh, bit of piece of information for investors and uh, for savers is interest rates, and yet we give up on that and decide that it should be controlled by one person. It's positively amazing that the economy tolerates it. Congressman, the economy, though, is holding up reasonably well. Uh, there are better signs lately. Certainly the unemployment rate has come down. Uh, that's one reason why we've seen a lot of holdings of gold, for example, take a big hit. Holdings, which I know your portfolio is overly concentrated in. Has your own wealth taken a hit here over the past year? Yeah, but I, I generally look at it long term because, uh, you know, I was looking at the dollar and inflation and gold uh, when we went off the gold standard, night, totally off the gold standard in 1971. So if you say it took a hit, well, at $35 an ounce and at different things, you know, it, it doesn't seem so bad, especially if you do it for insurance and, and long term. And we do know the governments will continue to spend. The deficit problem hasn't been solved. And I'll challenge you on some of the employment statistics. They're not quite as rosy as some people believe. I mean, we're, we're in big trouble. And I, don't, I challenge people on the inflation factor, too. Just think of that little article today in the Times where they said this woman was working two jobs and lives in a shelter which means she can't even get a house because her cost of living is too high. So there's a lot of inflation, a lot of unemployment, and to say that gold went down, you know, uh, in the last year, uh, that doesn't tell you a whole lot. You've got to look more long term. You've got to look at the basics, and uh, that's what most people don't do. The markets uh, deal with minute to minute. And uh, it can change overnight or within minutes it can change. And who, who knows what the next one will be. But I think most people who study free market economics knows that this is very, very fragile. The dollar is fragile. And the, uh, the statistics don't bear out that we have no inflation. So I think people should be more cautious than overly confident. Uh, Congressman, in the middle of all that fragility, as you describe it, in two weeks, Every federal agency from the Pentagon to the FBI is due to shut down unless there is a deal by September 30 on the federal budget. And then we have the debt ceiling argument. Speaker Boehner thought that he could get that through without much fuss until yesterday when 40 conservatives within your party rebelled at a strategy meeting. And now potentially we have a big problem. If you were Speaker Boehner, what would you do? Well, I would insist that people cut back. Uh, things are going to shut down. The, the choice is not so much, you know, inflate and spend and borrow and run up the deficits and continue on this path that we are, because the alternative is Detroit. You know, there's nothing that says that many, many cities, towns and states and the country could face a Detroit because of the fundamentals. 
and uh, it's tough because if you want, it's like an addiction. It's pretty hard to talk somebody out of their, uh, you know, out of their addiction and say, oh, well, wean yourself off. It doesn't happen, so they're not going to wean it off. So I would always make the case that continuing the addiction of spending and deficits and printing money, manipulating the, inc the uh, economy is much, much worse than taking your medicine, which would mean that you got to quit and you just can't wean it off. So I would say you ought to face the consequences. But that, that won't happen unless people decide what kind of government they want. If they want governments to police where we have a military that polices the world and we have an endless welfare state, Although, you can't do it. it they're not going to happen. So that, that's, why, that's why nobody should expect uh, anything to come of this other than, uh, you know, stalemate. That's what's going to happen. I think people understand that, Congressman, although you know as well as anyone that this round of negotiations seems to be tied, at least from the Club for Growth and Ted Cruz, to the defunding of Obamacare. Would you be, would you be willing, if you were still in office, to follow them down that road? Uh, yes, I, I would think that you have to uh, have to do what is necessary and if you continue the process, uh, you know, it just makes things worse. It delays the inevitable. So, it, yes, it, it, is, it is dangerous. I mean, it is a, it's going to be uh, difficult. But uh, if, if we don't do it, the consequences is so, so much greater. And besides, they're not going to do that. You know, if the most that happened last time was they got rid of uh, unessential workers for a couple of days and nobody noticed it, you know. <laughs> so they could, they don't have to do this. They could do essential services. The non-essential people could go home and nobody would notice. And it's just scare tactic. It's just like foreign policy. Scare everybody into it. you got to vote for the war. That's what they do in economics, like when we had the bus five years ago. Terrorize the people that you have to spend and do this and dig a bigger hole for ourselves. So we have to quit digging the hole for ourselves because we'll get buried in it pretty soon. Congressman, it's always good to get your point of view. A lot of people want to hear it. Uh, thanks for your time.